So this is part four of the Mid-Atlantic section. Carnegie Science Center. There's so much for children to do at this imaginative science museum in Pittsburgh that they may never get to explore station, the enormous fourth floor filled with interactive exhibits designed just for kids. Many children become sidetracked in high mark sports works, an entire building that emphasizes the physics of sports with virtual reality rides. Kids can run a race in a real track or design their own roller coaster ride on a computer, on a special computer, then ride it in a simulator. At the miniature railroad, con at the miniature railroad and village display, adults marvel at the historical accuracy of the petite Pittsburgh neighborhoods, while kids are spellbound by its simple and by its special animated features. First stop, fun. The miniature railroad and village has been a popular attraction of the Carnegie Science Center for the past 50 years. Look closely at the amazing detail that goes into each display. And it really, the camera's not going to do it justice, but it is really, really pretty. And it's got the little camera thingy. Philadelphia's Old City. The heart of Philadelphia is its old city neighborhood where the metropolis began. And the heart of old cities is Elwith Valley, the oldest residential street in America, where people have lived since 1702. 300 years ago, traders and merchants lived in Georgiana and federal-style buildings on the narrow street. Blacksmith Jer Jeremiah Elrith moved most of the property along the alley and rented his houses to shipbuilder sea captains and lumber land lumbers such as pewter smiths. Today, Old City is a vibrant neighborhood that is filled with theater companies, art galleries, restaurants, shops, and bars. Christ Church, the Betsy Ross House, and Independence Hall are a short stroll away. Architecture fans can head to Ellis Alley Museum, which offers guided tours of homes that were built between 1710 and 1825. There's a picture of the street. Independence National Historic Park and Independence Hall. If you really want to see America, start where the country started, Independence Hall. Philadelphia's center city, the area between 5th and 6th streets, and between Market and Chestnut, is home to the body and spirit of U.S. history. Independence Hall, which is now part of a 45-acre park along with 20 or so other buildings, is where America's independence was born. Once called the Pennsylvania State House, the simple building saw the foundations of the Declaration of Independence laid and brought to fruition. The comely two-story red brick building now has a steeple with a clock in it, but long ago the steepled house, that steeple housed the 2,080-pound Liberty Bell. It chimed often, supposedly annoying the neighbors, but most notably it was rung on July 8, 1776 to announce the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence. Now the bell is perhaps best known for its cracks and its silence. The bell no longer hangs in in the Independence Hall steeple because it has its own home on the park grounds. The Independence Historic The Independence National History Park covers three large city blocks. Follow the past quaint alleys to the many historical buildings and fascinating sites such as Ben Franklin's final resting place in the Christ Church graveyard. It's hall it's hollowed ground you're walking on, so take your time and try to see as much as you can. It's a visit you'll always remember. Construction on the Pennsylvania State House, now called Independence Hall, began in 1732 and was completed 21 years later. There's a picture of the hall. Liberty Bell Inscription. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. <sighs> Leave... 25 VX by order of the Assembly of the Providence of Pennsylvania for the State House of Philadelphia. Oh my god. Sorry, it's just really old timey. There's the Liberty Bell. <clears throat> Gettysburg. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania never asked to be a crossroads of history, but it became one nonetheless. Gettysburg, of course, was the site of one of the most pivotal battles of the Civil War. The clash during the first three days of July 1863 led to the eventual defeat of the Confederacy. Gettysburg National Military Park is the heart of Pennsylvania Dutch country, but it will forever be remembered as the place where General George Gordon means Union forces turned back to the Confederacy 
back the Confederate Army of General Robert E. Lee, and that's the location where President Abraham Lincoln gave his famous address four months later. Gettysburg offers visitors a surprising array of historic battlegrounds, monuments, and activities such as hiking and biking. Gettysburg includes the National Park, the adjacent borough, and the next door Eisenhower National Historic Site. Located about an hour and a half from downtown Washington, D.C., the Gettysburg area is a versatile vacation land. It provides visitors with the opportunity to take a solemn pr pilgrimage to the hollowed site where 50,000 soldiers were killed, wounded, captured, or went missing in action during the Civil War. Gettysburg is also a charming tourist town with such attractions as the Gettysburg Heritage Center, the Jenny Wade House Museum, the Lincoln Train Museum, and the Gettysburg Battle Theater. But the foundation of Gettysburg is really the 6,000-acre battlefield, and it's more than 1,400 markers and monuments. It is well worth the trip to see how peaceful hills and fields were the tide it is well worth the trip to see the now peaceful hills and fields where the tide of the Civil War changed. Serving as a lonely guard, this cannon is a reminder of one of history's most terrible battles. It sits on Little Round Top at Gettysburg National Military Park. And there's a picture of the cannon. <clears throat> Pennsylvania Dutch Country. As you drive through this peaceful realm, you'll pass classic barns and silos, horse-drawn buggies, wooden-covered bridges, and a pretty patchwork of farm fields and villages. You might even see girls in bonnets and boys in hats walking to their one-room schoolhouse. You won't see many in cars, of course, and some Amish children aren't even allowed to have bicycles because their elders fear they might venture too far from home. That's just one of the many things that sets apart the Pennsylvania Dutch country. I plan to stop at one of the region's pretzel bakeries, such as the Strudisburg Pretzel House in Litz, where which has been baking the snack since 1861. Here you can make your own pretzels and eat them right out of the stone oven. At Central Market in Lancaster City, you can purchase regional foods, flowers, and Amish crafts at the oldest publicity-owned, continuously operating farmer's market, which dates back to the 1730s. And there's a picture of an Amish man farming.